So the professor comes in, they're all sitting down, he takes the paper and he lays them out, one by one, face down. I know if you've ever had a test like this, I have. And he's like, no, turn it over until we start. And he flips out all the tests. And the professor then says, all right, time's begun, flip it over. And the students all flip over the tests. And at the top, they notice in the line that we usually, you know, you at least get one point if you fill in your name. That test, their, te their name has already been filled in. And as they look through the pages and they turn through all the pages one by one, they notice that every single answer has already been put in the test. And at the very end, they flip, thinking this must be some kind of joke, they flip to the very end. At the very end of the test is written down, this is the teacher, I want you to know, I went ahead and took the test for you. You got every answer right because I made the test, I wrote the test, I know all the answers. I took it for you, you all got A's, A plus, 100%. And underneath there, he wrote, you just, learned a, you just learned a valuable lesson about grace. There's nothing that you could have done. The test was taken for you. The passing grade was given on your behalf. And here's the deal. I walked in November 3rd to the, uh, the police officer or into the courtroom in Cass County, Missouri outside of Harrisonville. I walked in there with my outfit on, ready to go, terrified. I was pretty sure that they were going to cuff me in there and take me away to jail. And I walk in there, and I, I'm sitting in the, in the jail cell. I'm like, this was legit like jail. Like, there was a group of people came in behind me, like from one of the local county prisons, like chain gang, like orange outfits, chain gang. They're kind of shuffling in. And they sit down behind me, and I'm like, this just got serious. They're going to put me in one of those orange outfits and lock me up ankle to ankle with these people who are, like, covered, you know, in, like, scars and, like, scary tattoos. And, like, be like, these people are going to murder me. And the, the judge calls out my name, Brad Bartlett, come up here. And, I, you know, I go up there to the judge, and I stand up before the judge. And he's looking through his, uh, his paperwork, and he's like, he's like, what are you here for? And I told him, I was like, well... I knew I couldn't lie because the police report had it all there. I'm like, I was in a wreck, I wasn't paying attention, I was on my phone, you know, I was at fault, here, you know, all the, I, he looks at it and he goes, well, son, this is the greatest day of your life, because I can't find a single thing about you on here. All we got on here is your name. And to this day, and I checked, just in case it popped back up. I don't know what happened, but my name never showed up on any police record. My name never showed up on any court record. I walked out of that building with nothing. I was free. The judge was like, you're free to go. I don't know what happened. Somewhere, your record must have been deleted. It must have been lost because there's nothing here on my, my account. And I'll never forget that moment, and I don't think it's because God... You know, I prayed a special prayer, or I just believed so strongly that God would erase it. I think what it was, guys, is that God's love was just common grace enough that I got to see a glimpse of that love, a tiny one that day, because I was at fault. I committed the crime. And yet I walked out of there, and to this day, I've never been asked to come back. There's nothing on our record. This is true love. Love consists of this, that though we did not love him, God loved you so much that he sent his one and only son, God in the flesh, to die for you. Do you believe that tonight? If you're in the room and you've never said to yourself, I believe that, I pray that tonight you would know that when we talked at the beginning, what was the question I asked? What was the worst thing you've ever done? In the life of Jesus on the cross, in that moment, it's gone. There's no record. The test has been taken. The answers are in. You've passed. And God sends that sin as far as the east is from the west for all eternity, and he never remembers it. Because you are clothed in the righteousness of Jesus.
When God looks at you, he doesn't see your shame or your guilt or your fear or your anxiety or your wrongness. He only sees Jesus crucified on your behalf. And for those of you who are in the room and said, yes, I have accepted him. I do believe that. Let's go back to this morning. How are you living your life in light of that? Because if you've been, if you've run out of that grave, we just sang that this right before we started. If you've run out of that grave and you know that nothing is held against you on your account because of Jesus, what's stopping you from doing just the craziest things imaginable for the kingdom of God? And what's stopping you from sharing that good news with someone else tomorrow when you go home? And so as we finish up tonight, and as we go into our small groups, we're going to worship first. And as we go into our small groups, I want you guys to wrestle with that idea that God loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. And you didn't want him at all. And the good news is that God does want you. He wants all of you. And tonight could be the night that the greatest adventure of your life begins. Tonight. That's true love wrecks your world. Let me go from this place. And tomorrow morning we're going to talk about what it looks like to put that love to work. Let's pray. Father, I stand in awe of the truth of the gospel that though you were wronged in so many ways by me that every morning, every day, every night I commit sins that break your heart that disgust you when you look at me all you 